Will there be pets what in heaven? Are, are we in the end times? Like I, I what are current beliefs like most important to your God been since and how uh, grow in this Jesus area. proclaimed it. Hello, and welcome back to Now That'll Preach. My name is Jared Crowley. I'm your host. I'm sitting across from lead pastor of Church of the Harvest, David Freck. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're in a new building this week. We, yeah. uh, we're in the Ark in Gardner. So I want to give a special thanks to uh, David and Natalie Holland, Pastor David and Natalie Holland uh, from Restoration Church in Gardner mm-hmm. uh, for letting us use the space. It's awesome. Yeah. It looks amazing. These chairs are super comfortable. It's a great time. So yeah. <laughs> we do appreciate it. Yeah, they're, they're for sure. awesome. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are new to That'll Preach, if this is your first time watching, basically the idea is we take your questions, your comments, your topics that you send in to us, and uh, we throw them at this guy and ask him to preach a little 5, 10 mini sermonette uh, with no preparation whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So it's always a journey, always a good time. I always end up re-watching and you know, looking through some things afterwards, so it's a yeah. good time. Yeah. yeah, hopefully people enjoy them. For sure, for <laughs> sure, man. <laughs> All right, you ready for this one? Sure. Okay. Fire away. So this one, I don't know. I feel like this is an easy question, but I feel like maybe it's become a difficult question like <laughs> in our culture for some people. So maybe it's a deceptively simple answer, but what would you say is the significance of the church for the modern believer? Oh, you know what? That is, uh, it's actually, I would agree, it probably feels complex, mm-hmm. but I don't think it changes. It's The significance of the church for the believer has never changed. Mm. Um, Hebrews actually commands us, and and it's not a command, it's more of a a pleading, a beseeching, Mm. you know, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And then he gives us this little addendum to that, as the manner of some is, and so much more so as you see the day approaching. In other words, there is a a constant struggle about the value of the church, Mm He sees it within the context of, of the church. And so there'll be people, because they don't see its value, will say, it's not necessary. Yeah. And then he'll say, but it's even more necessary as the day, which is, of course, the coming of the Lord, right. as in the end of times is coming, it's, becoming, it's going to become more valuable, yeah. more important. more yeah. specific. So what is it? What is it that makes the church valuable to the believer? Well, uh, first of all, it's community. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just the, the community of people. And so let's understand that the church is the gathering of the collective of the people of right, God. Right, That's the church. Yeah. Uh, we we we've tend to institutionalize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I understand how we've done that. I understand that in some ways it is. But at its essence, at its core, the church is the gathering, the assembling of believers. Yeah, for sure. So so it's not the church unless two or three are gathered in his name, yeah, right? Yeah. So there's this sense of we're in community mm-hmm. and it's not just that we're hanging out, but there's intentionality yeah. and there's purpose. Right. So the intentionality and purpose of the gathering, the collective, mm-hmm. is that we first of all glorify, magnify and celebrate Jesus. For Secondly, sure. that we learn, grow in our relationship with God through our study of his word. Yeah. Uh, a third component that makes that community so important is just that, collectability, shared experience, yeah. witness and testimony, yeah. power of prayer. All of this stuff helps make us believers. So uh, the question would be, can you be a true disciple of Jesus independent mm-hmm. of the body of Christ? Yeah. And I would suggest there's nothing in scriptures that supports it. Sure, yeah. And I would also say that you cannot do it in a healthy manner. Mm -hmm. There's people that have done that. I don't need church. I don't need people. I just, me and God are doing our thing. Great. But you don't have another iron sharpening your iron. Sure, right. You don't have accountability. You don't have correction. Right. You don't have encouragement. Yeah. You don't have all these components and the body of Christ is just that. Right. How does Jesus manifest himself in the earth, not just to the earth and to those that don't know him, mm-hmm. but to even those that do know him? Yeah. How does he do it? Right. Through his body. For sure. Well, guess what his body is? Yep. It's you and you right. and you and you right. and you and you and you. So I can't even really get a full perspective of who Jesus is. Yep. It's so good. Independent yep. of the church. Yep. So um, it's a great question. I think it's a relevant question. Yeah, for sure specifically based on 
the culture COVID that and, has, yeah. you know, I, I think I think there was maybe as soon as five years ago, maybe even further, there was this real idea of, hey, let's downsize, let's just do church on our own. Mm -hmm. I don't need anybody. I can just get what I need. But that that's just consumerism. For sure. That's not community. Yeah, the church yeah. is not consumerism. Yep. yep. The church is community. Yep. And so, um, but I would say that there's been a, a movement. Yeah. At least in in my observation, there's been a movement of people that are understanding the value of that community. Yeah. And they're they're starting to let go of some of the uh, baggage mm -hmm. sure. that's been associated with it. Like, and, and I, I would say the baggage is related to expectations. Yeah, definitely. Because we begin to develop this expectation. Well, if you go to church, we expect those people to be perfect. Yep. We expect those things, those people to always do it right. We yep. expect those, you know, they're starting to understand that community and fellowship and relationship yeah. can be messy. Yeah. It can, it doesn't always, it's not always congruent with everything. Yeah. Uh, we sometimes fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. uh, these things happen. Yeah. And, but if we understand grace, we understand love, we understand the principles of fellowship, then, then we understand we're still better together. Yeah, for sure. Than we are independent. Sure. And uh, that's why Jesus said, you know, you got the 90 and 9, you know, talking about the one and the shepherd going after the one for yeah. what purpose? If God wanted us to be alone, the shepherd wouldn't go after the one. Yep, for sure. The shepherd went after the one to bring him back yep. into the fellowship. Yep, yep. So it's the heart of Jesus. Uh, it is the, it, not just the, I believe it's a command yeah. to the church. Yeah. Uh, you cannot really grow yeah. as a true disciple of Christ without it. Right. And, uh, and, and there's amazing benefit to your personal life as well as, yeah. as well as to the magnification of the graces and, and, and gifts that God's placed in your for life sure. for the sake of others. Yep. How would you ever be able to really assimilate that right. Right. if you didn't have an environment that would encourage yeah, that's it so good. and that yep. you could activate it? Yep. So the church does all of those things. Yeah, for sure. So I, for think sure. It's, um, I think it's a great question, and I think it's... Uh, it's absolutely necessary and more necessary now than ever before. Yeah, definitely, so, definitely. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so people could say, well, can I, have, can I be a part of community or church and not be right. in quote-unquote a like church? Like institution, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, think there, I think there is uh, certainly room for that. Yep. Um, I, I wouldn't tell somebody that's like in a home church situation or a home group situation that they are... Um, they're missing God. Yeah. But I, I, I definitely think that there are layers to community. Yeah. And so you have the small group, hyper connected, yep. uh, hyper interactive component of like what we call our harvest groups, right, right. which are a small church yep. experience. Yep. But then there's this real value of the, of the gathering. Sure. Yep. And if you study, I know I'm going on, but if you'll study no, no, at good. Acts 2, mm -hmm. it talks about the church meeting at two levels. Yeah. Talks about the church going house to house, yep. breaking bread, right. and it also talks about their gathering yep. Yep. for worship and celebration yep. and for the word in the temple. Yep. So you see that even in the early church, their first response to the power of the Holy Spirit and the launch of the church mm -hmm. activated in, in that in that century, that their response was to understand that the church is not one yep. in the absence of the other. Yep. But it was the congruent for sure. function of both of those. Yep. Yep. So we need the corporate. Yep. We also need the small. Absolutely. And yep. and they're both the church. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think there's congruency when they see them as connected and not something independent. For sure. Them. Yeah. 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 I agree. I think you miss out on the best parts of both if mm -hmm. you're just one. doing one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and they both add. Yep. For sure. Uh, you're going to find more inspiration. You're going to find more. Um, kind of dynamic presence mm -hmm. in the larger context, yeah. usually. Yeah. Um, but then, and you're going to also, in the larger context, you can also execute more. Yeah. You can also get more things done for at, sure. at a community yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. Not meaning that small things can't execute dynamic right. things. They can, but you're just going to find that the larger group has larger influence, sure. yep. larger resource, yeah. larger empowerment. Definitely. But then there's the real value of the small. Yeah. Um, that uh, we shouldn't escape either. For sure. Because yeah. you can hide in the big, but you can't hide yeah. in the small. Yeah, come on. Right? 
And uh, so you need you need both. Yeah, I, I absolutely, sure. and we believe that. We believe that if you're going to be a living, growing disciple, you need to be in a small group. Yep. You need to be serving in the larger context yeah. of the church. Yeah. And you need to be giving and growing and serving. For sure. And, yep. you know, and, and all of that is a part of growing in your yeah, relationship to definitely. Christ. So, yeah. 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 Uh, good question. Yeah. And, and, uh, Great answer, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, my pleasure is what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. No, I think that's so good, man. I think, yeah, the, I think you... You have to be pouring into the church, no matter what level you're engaging it at. You yeah, know I, mean? I think that's like, the mistake. I think yeah. we've, when we institutionalize the church, it's about what is the church doing for yep, me? For sure. And there is a component of that. Yeah, definitely. But but we don't get it until we understand the give and take. We yep. understand that I'm not just here to receive; I'm here to give. For sure. I'm here to release something. I'm here to encourage. I'm here to bless. I'm here to help. I'm yep. here to serve. I'm here to you know, I'm here to continue the ongoing mission of the body of Christ. Yep, yep. And uh, and if I just make the church about, you know, what it's doing for me, yep. uh, you're never going to grow. Yeah, for sure. You're never going to grow. For sure, yeah. I mean, there's times when that, that, that matters and yep. it's super important. Uh, but if that is the whole of your Christian experience, yeah. you're going to feel, you're going to be really not very happy as a believer. Definitely, yeah, <laughs> you're for really sure. Not. Yeah. And and you're not going to feel fulfilled yeah. as a believer either. Right. Just not. Right. So I encourage both. Yeah. I encourage Definitely. going both just like we For need sure. the large and the small, we need the give and the take. Yeah. Yeah. No, I always use the example of the Dead Sea because I so I love how God ties everything together with mm-hmm. how things work in science and nature mm-hmm. and stuff cuz you know, a body of water that doesn't have an output now, just grows bacteria and it's it's unhealthy and and, and nothing can exist yep, in it. Yep. And we are made up of a lot of water. <laughs> like, That's right. Just physically, our bodies alone. And if so. stuff isn't, if stuff's only going in yep. and I'm not releasing anything, yep. I become a stagnant pool. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Yeah. So great answer, man. Super yep. appreciate you as always. Appreciate your perspective. We appreciate you guys. Uh, we really view this as a resource, uh, so treat it that same way. You know, this isn't like a, a program that we put on for entertainment purposes alone. Uh, this really is designed to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus and help the people around you. So, uh, liking, sharing, subscribing, all those things really help boost it and get it out there. Awesome. And uh, we'll see you next week. Awesome.